Oh man, this is the top five CNC machining mistakes to avoid. And I actually brought the experts to the game for mistakes in CNC machining. So this is <laughs> Jesse and Barry. We're gonna have some fun right here, but uh, there is a huge amount of experience right here. And we just wanna like speak into you guys. Uh, this will be a fun one. Top five mistakes made in CNC machining to avoid. Boom, you guys ready? Yeah, ready? let's do All it. All right, so Barry, how about we start off with number five? All right, number five is incorrect work holding. Incorrect work holding, and that is crazy, right? So what oh, we're yeah. talking about is you're a CNC machining, you're in the machine, and you have a vise or some type of work holding, a chuck or fixture, and you're not holding your material correctly, thus it is either vibrating or the material's pulling out, which can break your tool, it damage windows, as Barry knows. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, take like the disco ball, for example, like I wanted to hold it on the dovetail and it was a very small dovetail, but I've never ripped anything out of a dovetail vise before. So I thought I was going to be good. I tried to take a light cut and next thing you know, I had a disco ball that became a pinball. And how many times has that happened to us? We're like, oh, I've done this in the past. We're like, I think this will work, but you don't really know until you, you hear it, until you see it. So a lot of times, you know, you might be uh, restrained by the features of the part or the material itself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you might have to adjust your machining strategy to accommodate how you have to hold it. You might forget to tighten down a vise. We broke the window on the DVF 5000 another time because of that. It's we because I own the company, but I wasn't actually involved, you know? So. It's like I like how he just puts half of it on you. We. This is a team effort here, guys. And it's funny because he mentions the disco ball, but I mean, that's one of those, like he literally had 30,000 dovetails. So there has to be common sense in machining also. So when you, look at, when you look at dovetails, make sure you go deep enough not to pull it out. So, and, and dovetails and fixturing is so important. When you think about efficiency and tool pass and the things that we're showing you in the videos, there's no way that you will have success unless you have rigid work holding, unless that part has to be sound, has to be rigid and unable to pull out of the vise. And if it's like that, then you can actually get after it with your tool. And speaking of the tool, the tool needs to be rigid also. So just complete rigidity in the work holding, boom. Let's go to number four. Jesse, how about we do number four? Yeah, number four, probably not as sexy, but failure to maintain your CNC machine. Keeping it old properly, you know, keeping your coolant chip or chips out of your coolant tank. You know, you don't want your motor to burn up or be right in mid cut in titanium and then your coolant just shut off. If you have a car and you don't maintain a car, if you don't put oil, if you don't change the oil, eventually the, the engine is going to seize and you're not gonna have a working vehicle. It's the same thing. A CNC machine is like $50,000 into the millions. You have to properly maintain this uh, machine. You have to do it on a regular basis. You have to have a manual uh, setup that, that gives you key features on like you know weekly day, daily weekly monthly quarterly maintenance and make sure that you stick to it because that machine is feeding your family if the machine goes down you're not making any money all right so let's go to number three neglecting quality control that means that you're machining a part and and during the process you're not checking key features like if you have a tool that starts running out and you know that that tool is like a, a quarter inch like 0.250 and you're doing a quarter inch hole if the tool's not in there correctly it could be doing a 270 thousandths hole a bigger hole out of tolerance and if you're not actually inspecting as you go then all of a sudden you can be scrapping your material and if you're scrapping your material scrapping the part then you're not going to have anything to sell to the customer and you're completely wasting your time you can machine the most beautiful parts in the world but if they don't meet the spec you're not going to be able to sell them and you're wasting your entire time and the company's time. And when the parts leave here, they're going to go to your customer and then they're going to open up that box. They're going to look at the parts. They're going to inspect the parts and they're going to have a conversation about the parts. Do you want them talking about how they're not to the print and how they can't use them? You want them like pulling in other engineers and saying, hey, this is garbage. And who did it come from? Oh, it came from Titans of CNC. 
absolutely not. You want them opening it up, looking at the parts, looking at them and saying, this is absolutely like, this is so beautiful. It's like jewelry, inspecting the parts, being like everything hit spec perfectly. These are like the most beautiful parts we've ever received. And therefore you start building a relationship with that customer and it's long term, which allows you to dig your roots into that customer which allows your company to be successful. So quality is everything, but it's only number three on this list because this list is about the top five mistakes that you make in CNC machining to avoid. So quality is number three. What's number two, Barry? Why are you picking me for this I'm one? just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, this is another one I have a little bit of experience with, but failure to double check your program, especially Z. Absolutely. So when we're programmed, this is like you're programming in CAM, in Master CAM, in Solid CAM, in one of these CAM uh, softwares. You're actually programming everything, boom, boom, boom. And during the process, as you go down, you have like your Z height. Like X and Y, you definitely can hit parts and hit things. And if you're on a five axis, definitely you can go into the table. But Z, the Z depth is one of the most important. And it's easy. Like you might be going like 0.2 or 2 point. And if all of a sudden you put 20 point and you don't actually simulate it correctly and you don't double check it and you don't dry run the tools above the part to catch it during the process, then you're going to crash the machine, which can destroy the spindle, which you can put the machine down. You know, I know people who have done this. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, let's get ready to run I think that also extends to any time you get a new post processor. If you've got a new machine on the floor and you had to buy a new post processor or you build one yourself, whatever it is, I don't care if it's even factory certified. Do not trust that post unless you have vetted it yourself. You've got a number of hours under it that you've gone through every scenario and you know that thing's not going to crash every scenario every scenario because yeah. just because it might do one tool path doesn't mean it can do another so number two is a huge one but it's easy to avoid and to avoid it you simply you double check all your numbers before you hit that enter then you simulate your program and move it around and make sure that nothing is actually going below all right, so we're almost to the biggest one right now. The top mistake that you can actually make in CNC machining and you need to avoid it. This is the number one thing. Jesse, let's go. All right, so this builds off of number two, but failure to offset your tools and your fixture correctly. Absolutely. I mean, I, I probably feel like that that's probably the biggest, all the crashes, I wouldn't say all, but most of the crashes happen because of that one right there. You're, you're right, right? Because e either the part came out or and then sucked into the tool or the tool crashed into the part or into a vice or wrapped it over and hit a vice or another part or something and you have crazy damage and this damage can actually destroy your machine. It can destroy your spindle. It'll put you down. When we were teaching the building blocks, one thing that some people were calling me out on is that I actually zero from top of part. I do, I do all my zeros on Z from top of part. Once I go more extreme in the five axis, I put the zero where it needs to be. But you got students, you got kids, you got workers, and you got them actually learning how to run a CNC machine. I always go top of part and, and for one reason and one reason only. Positive Z is safe. Negative Z is like you're in the material or you're in a pocket. So if, if I see, if, I, if I'm scanning through the code quickly or, or the code's moving and I'm like, I stop it and I see like 0.2, I know that I'm safe. But if I see negative two, then all of a sudden it's like, whoa. And if, I, if the part is only one inch thick and I see negative 12, then I stop and I'm like, we have a problem, right? So that's one of the reasons that we do that. Another thing that you absolutely have to do is before you run any job, you have to dry run all your tools at least six inches above the Z surface. And what we do is we turn the rapid down nice and slow for people that are new to the trade. We wanna turn the rapid feed down nice and slow and go through the cycle, stop it a few times, boom, stop it. And then look at, 
okay, it looks like it's six inches. Look up, it says it's six inches, and then you know you're good. You might want to even come down a little closer just to, just to make sure it's absolutely perfect. If you go through these different fail safes, you will have success. You will not be crashing your tools into your material. All the young guys that work here, even Barry, I tell them, you know, we, <laughs> but I tell them like zero all your tools, boom, boom, boom. Somebody comes up and talks to you and you forget where you're at, zero them out, do it again. Never take a chance, double check everything. So that is the top five mistakes in CNC machining. Now go out there and make some money, be a pillar in your company. Let's go, baby. I really think this list could all could be compiled into one and just not hire Barry. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was thinking we should have added was the distance to go is your friend. Oh yeah. We didn't mention distance to go, but that it's, is right. true. it's your friend. But something, I don't actually like distance to go. I like work because work tells me in, in reality where I'm at at all times to the zero. And sometimes if you're on distance to go and there's a lot of distance to goes and, it, and you're in a fast That's cycle true, or yeah. something, you, you can be like, oh, I got quarter inch, but there can be a different zero and a different yeah. zero. And it goes so quick that you yeah. like, all of a sudden you screw up and mm -hmm. stuff. But if, if, if I know that I'm, if it says you're two inches above the part, then you're two inches above the part. I can clearly see that. And this needs to go too. Like it, you have to start thinking about things. You know what I mean? It's good, but then you have to, you have to think about your program and yeah. where you're at in time and what's going to come next and all this stuff. You know? I mean, the whole world does, does distance to go. I just myself, like I've always kind of looked at it as, as like, if you're on a three axis part, like, psh, yeah. Cool. Did we knock it out? We did. Cool, man.